Hey, Thrand here, and we're here with a very important episode. We're going to be addressing different media such as YouTube and specifically television programs where they test budded male armor as if it was historical mail to show that uh, bows are extremely powerful or weapons are extremely powerful and kill the knight or men-at-arms easily at the time period. Uh, first of all, they're using budded mail, which is not historical in Europe and was not worn as standalone armor that I know of ever. Uh, it was normally worn over padding, some type of padded gar garment or gambeson-like garment, which means multiple layers of cloth, uh, which has protective qualities of its own, very, very, very much the same way as the mail does. So one of the things is they don't do that, first of all. Uh, and what they did in uh, Conquest, one of the worst examples, they just put it on a big T frame, hung the male shirt there, uh, and put a large log behind it to thrust through it with spears and swords and stuff. And they even, uh, after doing that, which of course they unbent and it went through easily, uh, they used an axe and hacked at it, tearing it down the front like that's how you would actually hit a person. I think not. Uh, but that type of mail, I mean, why didn't he just walk up and grab the top of the shirt and rip it apart? Because when it's butted like that and bent together, you can literally tear it apart. But actually, if you test it properly, even butted mail uh, is uh, has some resistance. It's not of the highest quality, and it won't stop thrusting uh, from extreme thrust, uh, depending on what you have behind it. If you had standalone gambeson behind it, it might, but normally you don't wear that much gambeson behind it. But if it was on a human head, though, normally in the early period, if you look at the depictions, they almost look like they have a fetal head and a very small face, but the body looks very streamlined and slender. So when you look at these drawings, you realize right away that they have this huge alien-looking head. Oh, they have to have a lot of padding under there. If they plan on wearing just a uh, Spangen-style helm or top helm, uh, and the male to do its protection, the human head is very vulnerable to bludgeoning damage. So the jaw and the head and so on had to have lots of padding around, especially the skull. So if you took the helmet off and let's say an arrow did hit you in the head, uh, guess what? Unless it's an extremely highly powerful draw weight of a bow, the human skull can resist arrows. Arrows can actually glance off of it. Uh, just like a helm would, just very much just like the helm would. So, yes, you'd want a lot of padding in the mail, but it is possible for that type of mail to stop an arrow to the head. Uh, it might hurt really, really bad. It might knock you silly, but it would stop an arrow, especially if you had proper riveted and solid ring mail or even all riveted mail, it could. Uh, I wager to say even butted mail, if it had proper padding under it and wasn't put over a watermelon, but over an actual analog head like we test in our videos where it's very similar to a human skull uh, I think it might stop the arrow so if they want to do these tests properly since they know that they're not testing proper male why don't they use a broadhead arrow if all they can afford is the butted or they don't know any better and don't have good historical advisors why don't they at least put over proper padding in an analog head if they did that you'd have a better idea that the male did do something and possibly worked, because I, I guarantee you it wouldn't go through like it did on the watermelon in Lee Ermey's blades and lock and load. And Conquest, like I said, was a horrible example, but let's see what happens if I go ahead and put it over analog ballistics gel head, uh, put the uh, uh, proper padding on it, and the coif, and shoot it with around a 65, 70 pound bow, let's say. And that's precisely what I thought would happen. lost lots of rings, as I suspected, and we hit him right in the side of the head. This is the same coif that was used, pretty much, a, a budded male coif, not a historical coif, on, uh, on lock and load blades when he tested the English longbow that he had. And it's about the same power bow. He's got a little wound to his head, but not much. Just a little bit on the flesh. So we didn't crack the skull, and he's still alive. If they would have used proper padding instead of just laying a male coif over a watermelon, uh, they would have a totally different result. Let's see what happens if we just shoot the head. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I think you missed a skull. I missed the skull. I ate a bit lower. Ooh. I like I thought. Without the padding of the coif, 
we got a wound directly into the skull. Okay, someone just got a new nasal piercing. Okay, now he's ugly in old Viking terms. He lost his nose. Well, anyway, as usual, Farvel. Bye-bye.